Good and Loki having a good time out there. In any case, I can use filter on this list to get the multiplier based on a key, the value of this value property. I'll figure it out when my brain is a little bit more clear. <laughs> I just want to, let me get this rendered into the DOM. My brain's never going to be more clear, but it's wishful thinking. Actually, what I've done today is just taken this. Um, where is it? Where is it? Oh my goodness, it's hard to. No, nope, we're done there. Uh, I haven't had to use Postwoman. I mean, I used it trying to create a subscription, realized that um, <laughs> we have to predefine all the subscription types, so that's uh, probably not the most ideal way forward. Okay, so that was a quick experiment with the um, sort of the PayPal REST API approach. Similarly with Python SDK, it'll be the same problem, just wrapping this HTTP API and a Python interface meaning before we can subscribe or create a subscription instance, we'll have to define all these plans, which are permutations of uh, format and discount. So it's like 12 options and kind of not the most ideal user experience. We're really aiming for this. This is our, our mock-up. So what I've been working on today is just to take this wireframe that I made more or less mock-up in Bootstrap Studio and turn it into a little bit of a dynamically uh, generated form um, here actually rendering in the browser as a test template and uh, to recap the code we have uh, we've got a view uh, rendering in Django we don't have any view code right now we don't have anything to process on the server side so this is just an HTML template um, it renders a form and a couple of field sets where in each um, Field set, we iterate over some options, format options in this case, and render inputs and labels for each format options that we're echoing it out or printing it back out. And then, likewise, for the discount options, so we have format and discount options, we're just iterating for each of those and um, binding an input and value to a JavaScript uh, object that we'll be looking at in just a second. And we've got a label there. Uh, and then there's just some other static. Uh, templating relating things we'll need to figure out how to handle um, people that choose not to have recurring um, subscription it might just be a matter of if they select no recurring subscription to um, toggle these values like disable them or something so we don't have if it's something recurring every one year um, also this subscription cost value will be dynamically computed we'll follow up with that next session so here's the JavaScript code. We're using this really cool project called Light DOM. It's one of the, probably my favorite uh, kind of reactive view libraries that I've found on the web. Um, it's comparable in some ways to React.js or Vue.js, but much lighter. Uh, it follows, uh, here's very closely to web standards. It gives you reactive data binding, uh, both one way and two way. It's got similar uh, concepts to what people working with React and Vue and Angular are used to. Properties, lifecycle callbacks, and managing the DOM state, computing properties and directives. <clears throat> but it's so lightweight, there's no major dependencies. It doesn't even need a virtual DOM. DOM is not our enemy. Uh, it's not as maybe slow or bad as it's been made out to be. And no JavaScript uh, build tool baggage. You don't need to commit your whole front end framework uh, to a framework and you can still use the power of Django templating language or other um, projects if you're in Laravel or um, something that has its own built-in uh, templating capabilities. You can just sprinkle this in and have a little bit of re reactive. Um, it's not quite incremental, uh, progressively enhanced because you still, um, the, date, the DOM state is still managed in JavaScript and this is not so it won't function in a way without our form won't function without JavaScript basically uh, but that's another thing I need to just run by Mary, Mary to make sure she's okay with that and then so finally let's just take a look at the light dumb code for our project whoops I keep trying to maximize that um, and essentially you you draw, uh, define an ES 2015 module so these have been around a while they're supported in pretty much all major uh, evergreen browser at this point 
So if you look at can I use ES um, modules, it's in, we're in good company there. Uh, we import the library from a package. Uh, I could include it in our project. At a, some point, you create a, um, an instance of the Light DOM with uh, sort of a configuration object. And inside that configuration object, what you do is you just tell the element to which the uh, component should attach, meaning the reactivity and the state management and everything. So in our case, we're just, I've got a form element on the page up here, PayPal form. And we're just saying light DOM, go ahead and take over this whole form. I could, if I wanted, just have light DOM to uh, take over a subset of fields just by wrapping them in a div. But nothing in the form is really sensitive or, or going to leak or, I mean, there's no reason uh, that I can think of that light DOM couldn't just handle the form. It won't handle the form submit event to my understanding. That could be one area that I'll have to check. And after that, we are able to manage some data reactively. We created properties for format and discount, meaning the format of our magazine and any discount multiplier coefficient. We populate, uh, this is hard coded, but this will ideally be coming from the back end. We'll look in future uh, sessions about how to pass data from Django directly into the JavaScript context and templates without having to like um, throw away the Django templating language. And so essentially it's just, you know, label value and uh, this with the format options, we've got a base price and for the discount options, we have a multiplier. Um, I'll figure out the best way to define those in code. And then this will be dynamically calculated. We have not gotten to that yet, uh, nor have I actually displayed it in the template. Uh, it'll be down here. I'll reorganize the template next time. So officially, uh, essentially what we've done is just to take these these lists of format and discount options and render them into the DOM uh, by using uh, a for loop and the light DOM library. But I'm really impressed by light DOM. It's not a really well, it's not super extensive library. Um, so I guess it doesn't have to have, you know, crazy amount of, of uh, documentation. Uh, I guess you can just learn it, how to use the library in, you know, under an hour if you've already, particularly if you've already used you know, view or, or react or something like that. So we'll be looking through the docs a little bit more, particularly these methods. We'll need to trigger these um, on, on events. When those DOM elements change, we'll, we're going to uh, recompute the um, subscription cost and pass that into the hidden attribute uh, here for PayPal. Okay, well, this has been another codebytes.org live code session. Thank you all for hanging out. Uh, Cyber Guy Rich, it's a good senior, Imperium 42. Uh, keep track of this account. I'm glad to see familiar faces coming back to the stream. And let me know how you're doing with your projects. Maybe we can do some pair programming on your, on your projects, for example. Um, Imperium 42, I'll be glad to know how your Django uh, path is going. If you want to do some Django work, I can um, steer you towards a couple of kind of low hanging fruit easier uh, tasks on a, these open source projects I've been working on. All right, and in general, if you want to uh, get involved with some uh, with a really great community, stop by CodeBuddies.org. There's a lot of different study groups and hangouts happening all the time. So you can, if you're not interested in Python and Django, you, there's something there to to suit your fancy. We got you know data science, Java, JavaScript, React. Well, it's all good. It's all fair game. Uh, just find out. Uh, you know, what you're interested in and, and get connected with the community. CodeBuddies.org is also an open source project. It's currently being rewritten. Uh, the React uh, front end and with a React front end and a Django back end, it looks like. Those are the primary um, candidate implementations. If you want to get involved with a friendly and grassroots open source project, stop by github.com slash CodeBuddies. Thanks again for hanging out, everybody. Have a great day and stay well out there.